Fei Pinying Jiang. Chapter 36 Array of Death As Zhao Weidou was investigating every entrance to Yusha Pass, Sita secretly brought two people inside. They were the two spies that Zen Yuan Country's king had ordered to infiltrate the pass. Their names were Yuan Fi Yu and Cha He. After Li Chen had left, Qi Yun Ruo originally wanted to visit big sister Yuan Yuan and her children, before returning to their quarters. But on the way there, he caught sight of brother A Chang dressed casually, leading two people. As he laid eyes on those two people, Qi Yun Ruo frowned with uncertainty. They seemed familiar. Although he did not know them, they seemed to have often appeared before him. For some reason or perhaps it was the doing of a higher power, Qi Yun Ruo changed his path. He followed them from afar. Wasn't General Sita responsible for supporting Li Chen's army? And wasn't General Zhao Wei trying to unearth all the spies? Brother A Cheng was Sita's subordinate. So what was he doing? It felt as if something pierced his heart. Sita's camp was special. Because there were many locals that formed the military population there, they were more familiar with each other. Even the staff there, cooks and laundry washers among others, were local. Moreover, it wasn't like Zhao Weidu's camp, which was serious, strict and did not allow just anyone entrance and guards were watching at every step. As Qi Yunruo followed them inside, he did not attract much attention. However, the further he went, the more concentrated the people were. It was becoming too obvious that he was a stranger. What should he do? Who should he look for? General Zhao was not present. His Highness men had already left as well. Who would believe that he belonged here? However, his intuition was acting up. Because Sita had allowed those two familiar people entrance, who would believe in the possibility of a conspiracy involving him. It had only been one hour since Li Chen and the army left the grounds. Suddenly, Qi Yunruo thought of something. Those two with special identities had entered through the front entrance. One would fear they would not leave from the same place. Qi Yunruo made a trip around to the back entrance of the general's tent. There, it was closer to Zhao Weidu's camp. After he saw the door, Qi Yunruo suddenly found his actions baffling. He wanted to leave this place, but it was as if roots had sprung from his feet into the ground. Fifteen minutes later, Yuan Fi Yu and Cha He exited the tent. Lingering on Yuan Fi Yu's lips was a hint of a sneer. He recalled what Sita had said earlier. Did you really think this general would not be aware of your actions? When this general had first started guarding the pass, you two were still children. Yuan Fi Yu and Cha He did not speak. The other party had the power to kill them, and as such, they could only follow his orders. However, Sita was very calm, allowing them to leave. Furthermore, he asked them a request, to quickly leave the pass and gather a large group in front of Yan Luo Valley to ambush Sita's men, which were coming in six hours. Cha He widened his eyes in disbelief. Yuan Fi Yu understood in a flash, mouth twisting in a sneer. For General C to delay the support, perhaps you want your prince to die. Sita's gaze was somber. There won't be any disadvantages for you to do this. If Prince Chun achieves a great victory, the next one to suffer would be your Zen Yuan country. Yuan Fi Yu fell silent. Then suddenly said, perhaps General C knows Fu Yang. Sita smiled. His gaze carried thick ridicule. Yuan Fi Yu felt more and more carefree. There was no honesty or truth among the princes of the great state of Kong. Only lies. They would in fact benefit from Prince Chun's death. From what he knew, the other princes did not have as much ability as Prince Chun. Good. We will agree with you, said Yuan Fi Yu with a smile. From afar, Qi Yun Ruo watched as the two exited the tent. Heart suddenly struck with terror. But the sound of a horn saved him. Sita's army was starting to pack up their necessary items. After that they could technically leave at any time. In four hours, they would exit Yushu Pass to serve as Prince Chun's backup. At that moment, everyone burst into action. 
Chi Yunruo sucked in a deep breath. He casually grabbed a broom and swept the ground. Yuan Fiyu and Cha He weren't paying attention and didn't notice him. But Chi Yunruo saw the person behind them. He froze. It was Brother A Cheng. Dong Cheng looked at him without a word. His gaze swirled with emotions, complicated to the extreme. Because Chi Yunruo had quickly lowered his head, he did not catch it. Dong Cheng brought the two spies to choose some horses. After that, he would lead them to a secret exit of Yushu Pass. Chi Yunruo followed in silence. Though Dong Cheng heard a noise, he didn't obstruct him in any way. Like Chi Yunruo, he had also just discovered Sita's intention. An instant later, he felt that it would be good if that prince met his demise. Chi Yunruo would then be set free. General Si had saved him and his wife. Whatever the general wanted him to accomplish, he would do it. Among the chaotic footsteps, Dong Cheng and the two spies finally arrived at Sida's personal stable. Chi Yunruo hid just outside of it. All of a sudden, he heard Cha He mockingly say, Thank you sir for leading the way. Our brethren will gather our men and act as an obstacle to your general. We'll definitely be accurate with our estimates. Once General Sita reaches Prince Chun's side and Prince Chun dies, he will benefit while both sides, the Qiang army and the prince's army, would have suffered casualties. After Yu and Fei Yu chose a horse, Dong Cheng brought them outside without a word. Qi Yunruo covered his mouth and nose tightly with his hands so as to not make a sound. Hiding in a corner, he waited until they were far away, before getting to his feet and breaking into a sprint. Chi Yunruo's thoughts were in a mess. He led his horse by the reins. But then, he remembered that he could not leave the pass at this time. Zhao Weidou was investigating who knew where. And the people around would definitely not believe him. I will leave an official seal for you. If anything happens, don't be afraid. Chi Yunruo slipped a hand into his chest pocket and retrieved from it a jade seal. Then he climbed atop his horse and left Yushu Pass. At this time, Li Chen had already been gone for two hours. If Li Chen and his men had hurried, they would be one third of the way to Yan Luo Valley already. Chi Yunruo had only taken a glance at the map when Li Chen had been looking at it. So although he knew the general path, he wasn't like Li Chen and memorized the whole way. It was hard to see far in the border with all the sand and dust. Chi Yunruo followed the tracks left behind by Li Chen's army. In his opinion, Sita would not dare to openly harm the prince. If he caught up with Li Chen's army before it clashed with the Qiang army, and had them slow down to match Sita's delay, then when their army finally fought, there would be 105,000 people against the enemy. Then later, His Highness would deal with Sita. They were delayed by two hours. Chi Yunruo's horse wasn't that fast. A long while later, it became noon. Sweat clung to his body. He looked at the bright sun above and was uncertain of which direction to take. Yan Luo Valley. Yan Luo Valley. Running along the front of Yan Luo Valley was the Yun River. He had faintly overheard the prince say how the land would change. After the sand became less and less, the tracks left behind in the road would become harder to see. Their border was sparsely populated. As Chi Yunruo traveled, he recalled what the prince had said about the area, and tried to look out for these things. As such, his pace slowed. Because 5,000 men traveling was faster than 100,000 men marching together, Li Chen and his army did not move too quickly. At noon, they could just make out a faint outline of Yan Luo Valley in the distance. For some reason, Li Chen suddenly looked behind him toward Yushu Pass. Li Yu, who was by his side, asked inquisitively, Your Highness, what is it? Li Chen shook his head. He turned back around and said, Nothing. But he could not suppress the sudden strange feeling. Was it because little Chi was starting to worry for him and think about him? Report, Your Highness, it is safe 1.5 kilometers ahead. Then let us stop for a break. Understood. Li Chen hopped off his horse. Then he once again looked in the direction of Yushu Pass. 
his expression spoke of uncertainty. Was little Chi worried? Unfortunately, it was very dangerous this time. He could not bear to bring him along. Currently, Sita's army should have already left Yusha Pass. Far away, wild beasts growled but did not dare to approach them. After they rested enough, Li Yu approached to ask if the army was to continue moving forward. Li Chen nodded. Not too far away, wolves howled. Li Chen was just about to hop on his steed, but he stopped in his action. He gazed at the far away Yan Luo Valley, then looked at the direction of the Yun River. Let's continue. The army followed the Yun River in its march. For some reason, Li Chen felt anxious. In the evening, Qi Yunruo finally encountered danger. A lone wolf stood in his way. He climbed on top of his exhausted horse. The lone wolf crouched, staring at him with cold eyes and was about to strike. Qi Yunruo did not have any food with him nor did he have a weapon. Unadulterated dread and hopelessness enveloped him, smothering him. He was also aware that his own horse was trembling. Not to mention, it was exhausted. It was not in a state where it could outrun a wolf. The lone wolf could smell his fear and it charged at his way. Chi Yunruo's horse neighed, shrill to the ears. He widened his eyes and urged the horse to run. In a hairbreadth of a moment, an arrow shot at the wolf from afar and the wolf immediately collapsed. But Chi Yunruo couldn't take it anymore as he tumbled down from the horse's back. Little Chi. Li Chen's eyes grew so wide, they were about to tear. Right before him, Chi Yunruo fell elbows first onto the ground. They seared with pain, knocking a groan from his lips. But once Li Chen had arrived at his side, he already forgot his pain. With wide eyes, he urgently said, Your Highness, stall the army. Sita will delay his support. He is helping the spies. He'll pretend to be ambushed, and by the time he arrives, I'm afraid it'll be too late. Li Chen lightly frowned. Then he started to examine Qi Yunruo's wounds. His elbows were already swollen. Thankfully, the ground was soft and the horse wasn't that tall so he didn't break any bone. Li Chen let out a sigh of relief and helped him to his feet. Your Highness, what should we do? asked Qi Yunruo. Is it going to be dangerous? Tense, he glanced at the surrounding mountainous regions. Would the Qiang army be hiding in the mountains? Li Chen fell silent, as if he were pondering. He supported Qi Yunruo's arm, and slowly approached his men. Your Highness. The sky was already growing dark. Originally, they should be close to Yan Luo Valley by now but Li Chen had told his men to take a break as a strange force had told him to do so, for someone would be rushing over. Li Chen lowered his head, resting his forehead on the crown of Qi Yunruo's head. Qi Yunruo tiredly closed his eyes. The two stood there in quiet and serenity. A gentle breeze in the night, stars waking from their slumber. Li Chen seemed to sigh and reminisce. Little Qi, You've come. Qi Yunruo lifted his face and looked at him, eyes carrying a sense of resolute that was hard to wear away. Li Chen said, What happened today? Tell me. After Qi Yunruo relayed what he had heard and seen, he received a canteen from Li Chen and took a large sip of water. Li Chen said, Don't drink so fast. There's still a lot of water. Qi Yunruo said, Are we returning to the encampment? Li Chen shook his head. Then what are we going to do? Under the light of a torch, Li Chen studied a map. Sita is in contact with the spies from Zenyuan country. I don't know where they would be waiting for Sita. So, we cannot return rashly. A light sigh escaped Qi Yunruo's lips. It's too dangerous, your highness. Why must your honored self leave the pass? Yet Li Chen only smiled. The five thousand men had already stopped in their tracks, and surrounded Li Chen, Qi Yunruo, and his close guards. Is it worth it to use yourself as bait? A while later, Li Chen sighed. Do you know how many Qiang soldiers wiped out sixty thousand of our men back then? Qi Yunruo shook his head. I'm not sure. 
they set up an ambush at Mount Buzi and Mount Chi. After they lured Situ Su to leave the pass, they first scattered their men, and pushed boulders down the mountains, arrows falling from the sky like rain. All these kinds of tricks. Chi Yunruo recalled that when they had first arrived at Yushu Pass, Li Chen had asked those soldiers who lost the previous battle how Situ Su died. And he could not help but nod. And considering the events of the past, I guessed that the Qiang army would be no more than 10,000 men. For me to bring only 5,000 men would not be enough to take them down. However, the area where the Yun River runs is very flat. There's no way anyone can hide and launch an ambush there. No matter what direction they try to ambush us, we will be ready for them. The Qiang people are not well versed in the art of war. They would want to charge in without any other thought. I wanted Sita to delay for six hours. Not only do we need the Qiang soldiers to attack from all directions, we also need to use that time to apply our military strategies, waiting for their attack. The Qiang people would not give them time to prepare. But because Li Chen was now the one waiting for them to come, they had plenty of time to spare. Relieved, Qi Yunruo nodded. Li Chen said, our great state of Kang's military has many resourceful generals. But why is it that for so many years, we have never achieved a great victory? Since long ago, they have been afraid of the Qiang people. Afraid to lead men out of the pass, but see de, a trace of gloom colored Li Chen's face. Qi Yunruo recalled brother A Cheng and big sister Yuan Yuan and he could not hold back the sadness in his heart for a moment. Li Chen seemed to understand what he was thinking about. He softly said, I promise you, no matter what happens to Si Dei, I will allow that couple to keep their lives. From the start, Li Chen had been suspicious of Si Dei. He gave him an important responsibility this time because among Si Dei's army of 100,000 men, some of those soldiers belonged to Zhao Weidu. Si Dei could not do anything fishy. Yet he actually got in touch with spies from Zenyuan country. Zenyuan country. For so many years, it wasn't as if no one in the court had not been suspicious of him. Even Li Chen had thought of it. The king of Zenyuan country had a surname of Cheng. The previous dynasty's surname was Cheng as well. It's just that Zenyuan country had never publicly announced that their king was of the previous dynasty's Cheng family. The only time in which they had attacked the border of the great state of Kong, they had not shown the motive of wanting to seize back their old land. Qi Yunruo did not even bring thick clothes. He could only wear one of Li Chen's coats. The Yun River and Luo River were two large rivers that fed into Zenyuan country. The Yun River ran through the land beyond Zenyuan country, to a place even further to the north. The Luo River entered Suzhou and fed into the counties of Qing Luo, Mi Luo, and He Luo. What they needed when fighting a battle outside the pass was morale. If they had to retreat even a step, one would fear their morale would be cut by half. In the middle of the night, it was extremely quiet, a breeding ground for murderous intentions. How long could Sita delay his men? In the darkness, Li Chen opened his eyes, cold laughter spilling from his lips. The sound of hoof steps and shouts. They almost rang at the same time. Li Chen pushed Qi Yunruo in the back of him. His deep gaze fell upon the youth. But Qi Yunruo smiled. He gripped the dagger Li Chen had given him. I will protect myself. Stay by my side, said Li Chen lowly. Qi Yunruo nodded. Li Chen turned his gaze in front of them. Yelled, pound the drums. Get in position. Qi Yunruo and Li Chen stood at the center of the army. He peered into the darkness. The army quickly moved from a square formation to a ring formation. The Qiang soldiers charged at them in a straight line. And the ring purposely had a lot of gaps. Half of the army of the great state of Kong was infantry. At the beginning, Qi Yunruo did not know why their cavalry wasn't charging ahead and rather was arranged in the inner layers of the ring. The outer rings were mostly infantry. The Qiang soldiers rode their horses and brandished their weapons. They yelled and rushed toward their array. After the first group broke through, the ring array continuously rotated, 
surrounding those Jiang soldiers. Eight infantry soldiers attacked together, a cavalry officer acting as support. An arrow at the end of its flight could not even pierce a thin piece of silk, and the first Jiang cavalry group that broke through was eliminated. If Qi Yunruo understood the art of war, then he would know that Li Chen's first ring array was the simplest, the eight trigrams array. The Qiang people weren't idiots. Once their first group was wiped out, they immediately stopped their assault. And their vanguard cavalry would not be easy to take out. Li Chen waved his saber. Pound the drums. Change to the six flower array. At the back of the Qiang army, Bo Tu K coldly said, who would have known that the Han prince still had a few tricks up his sleeve. New Bai Ha sneered. It's only a few thousand people. Even if they had some measures, how long could they last? He swung his scimitar. Behind him, nine warriors roared. New Bai Ha said, I don't believe those arrays can suppress my most brave and powerful Western Owl men. End chapter Fei Pinying Jiang Chapter 37 Slaying the Enemy After the army had established the Six Flower Array, Li Chen still stood at the center of it. The outer layer of the array had formed the appearance of six unfurled petals. Meanwhile, the innermost ring rotated quickly, the soldiers moving to their proper positions. The cavalry and infantry attacked in a cooperative effort. Similarly, the archers stayed in the back as the spearmen fought in the vanguard working together. However, after they had decimated half of the Qiang army's military might with the eight trigrams array, the Qiang army grew more vigilant. The six flower array required many people to sustain itself and prove effective. Because Li Chen's army was small, it allowed the enemy to swiftly find their weak points. At this moment, the sound of their clashes shook the heavens. Li Chen stood with his saber, surveying the surroundings, sending more men to areas that were lacking in numbers. Your Highness, we cannot sustain this formation for much longer. The Qiang soldiers roared, before charging at the array. The deaths and casualties of their brethren stoked the fire of their anger and hatred. Their war horses were valiant, not one bit afraid of the weapons of their opponents. Once the outer ring of the six flower array was put in disarray, the remaining nine western owl yakshas charged over with an impressive air. Li Chen gripped his saber. Switch to the fish scales array. Charge. Although Nu Bai Ha did not see a way of breaking through the formation, considering that the Qiang people were brave to the extreme and that their numbers eclipsed that of the Han army, they just kept charging straight, charging until they broke through the array. In the first place, the twelve Western Owl Yakshas were the Western Owl tribe's most powerful warriors. With the addition of Nu Bai Ha, the ten warriors stormed in like there had been no one trying to block their path. Even more than a hundred people couldn't hinder them, and they left a trail of blood in their wake. But now, they could not go any farther. It was because Li Chen had personally entered the battle. By his side were the most elite of his estate guards. He raised his saber and swung it down. Tens of people roared and clashed with the incoming enemy. Li Chen slashed his saber in Nu Bai Ha's direction. With a light lift of a hand, Nu Bai Ha parried Li Chen's attack with his long scimitar. He yelled, Han Prince, you'll be leaving your life here. If you have the guts then come closer. Sita still had not appeared. Qi Yunruo hid behind a large boulder. There was a group of guards by his side, protecting him. However, the situation was growing more and more dire as the expressions of the people beside him grew darker and darker. As long as Sita didn't make an appearance, their 5,000 men would be decimated. Qi Yunruo rose to his feet. He searched for Li Chen's figure among all the crowd but it was to no avail. His ears suddenly caught a bang. Qi Yunruo felt like his ears had shaken from the force. Right before his eyes, the boulder in front of him cracked. Then a guard yelled, swinging his sword. All of a sudden, Qi Yunruo realized there was a large Qiang man standing before him. A single leather wrap covered his torso. His gaze proved frightening, he was holding a large hammer in each of his hands. 
He shouted something in the Qiang tongue and from his expression, it was evident that he did not care about those few guards before him. Fear struck Qi Yunruo. He couldn't help but retreat a few steps. The large Qiang man sent the guard flying with his hammer. Then he chased after Qi Yunruo. Since he was under the protection of some guards, he must be someone of high status. The guards reacted in a flash as seven to eight people surrounded the large Qiang warrior. They attacked together. The Qiang warrior towered a threatening eight feet high, his skin tanned. The muscles of his arms bulged. He slammed a hammer down, sending a group of guards into the air. The guards on the other side dared not approach. They could only try to find gap in his defenses, searching in all directions. Qi Yunruo's heart thrashed against his chest. He retreated a few more steps and almost tripped. The large Jiang warrior had smashed half of the large boulder he had hid behind into smithereens, the ground littered with bits of stone. Watching as he sprinted toward a guard, Qi Yunruo suddenly had an idea. He lifted a rock that was the size of two fists, and with a roar, used all of his strength to hurl it at the Qiang warrior, hitting him smack in the head. The warrior stilled and turned around. He glared at Qi Yunruo with a furious gaze. Behind him, a guard found an opening as he held his sword with both hands, rushing over to stab the warrior. The long sword pierced through skin, but the large Jiang warrior merely snarled and swung a hammer behind him, knocking his attacker and his sword away. The warrior had bludgeoned the guard's chest, and the latter fell to the ground, blood spraying from his lips. The large Jiang warrior did not care about his injuries. He continued to rush toward Qi Yunruo. Qi Yunruo gasped for air, his legs shaking. The two guards that had been knocked to the ground shared a look. They both got to their feet and sprinted in the warrior's direction. Each of them gripped one of the warrior's arms. Another two guards clutched each of the warrior's legs. Young Master Qi, hurry and run. Run to his highness side. The warrior tried to shake off the guards on his arms. Just as he was able to, Qi Yunruo shifted his gaze at the guards. He did not run away. As if he had gone mad all of a sudden, he dashed the warrior's way. And he thrust his short dagger deep into his chest. And deep into his heart. Suddenly, blood spurted out like a fountain. Since Qi Yunruo stood only as tall as the warrior's chest, it dyed his face red. Wet and hot, carrying a heavy metallic scent. The large Jiang warrior collapsed onto the ground. The four guards dodged his falling figure by moving to stand at the side, exhaustion upon them. Qi Yunruo paused, and then went to check on the guard who had been struck in the chest. The force of the blow had sunk his chest, red blooming from his armor like no tomorrow. He gazed at the sky with lifeless eyes. It seemed he wouldn't be able to hold on much longer. Sorrow in his heart, Qi Yunruo looked at him and asked, What's your name? He had long since been unable to speak. But he glanced at Qi Yunruo with a deep gaze. Someone by Qi Yunruo's side said, His name is Qiu Rui. Qiu Rui closed his eyes. Qi Yunruo was completely at a loss. He looked in the distance, where cries of battle shook the heavens. Looked at the lives that, at a moment's glance, vanished. This was a soldier was the wilderness and also, pity the white bones in the mass grave. Furthermore, at the edge of the moonlight was the tragic and moving sound of Hwajia as layers of frost condensed on the soldier's uniform. The words of books transformed into reality before his eyes. The prince? Where was the prince? Qi Yunruo rose to his feet. He realized that the battlefield had already changed. Within the fish scales array, the soldiers were still maintaining the formation, charged out in an oblique fashion, slaying numerous Jiang soldiers. Li Chen's many days of training had not been in vain. After three arrays, the Han soldiers had shielded against two rounds of assaults from the Jiang army and killed a few thousands of them. Qi Yunruo finally discovered Li Chen's location. There weren't many Jiang soldiers where he was. Qi Yunruo stumbled as he ran to him. Li Chen and Nu Baiha had already left their horses. Both sported injuries. 
New Baiha's face was malevolent, both hands grasping his scimitar. Suddenly, he burst into laughter. Han Prince! Your princess should have already become our eldest prince's bride tonight. When it comes to you Han people's relationships, what should you be calling our second prince? The younger brother of your brother-in-law? Or would it still be brother-in-law? Li Chen drew out his saber and retreated a few steps. New Baiha stabbed his scimitar forward. Li Chen performed a backflip and gripped his scimitar with his feet. Then his torso bounced back up, and he slashed at New Baiha's neck. New Baiha could not help but release his weapon. He gripped the body of the saber. The sharp edge of the blade sliced a deep line on his palm. Li Chen kept applying force and New Baiha sent a kick his way. Then Li Chen pulled back his saber, and using the force of his knees, trapped New Baiha on the ground. With a yell, he thrust his saber down. However, New Baiha revealed a victorious smile. Approaching Li Chen from behind was a western owl Yaksha with a spear, his image reflecting in New Baiha's eyes. Li Chen's pupils dilated. Unexpectedly, he felt a weight on his back, the body of that western owl Yaksha pressing on him. And borrowing that momentum, he stabbed his saber into New Baiha's chest. This all happened in the blink of an eye. Li Chen freed himself from that person on his back, shoving him to the ground. He noticed that that Yuska had a wound that went through his body, the eyes of that Yaksha reflecting confusion in how he could die. A thought zipped through Li Chen's mind. He looked behind him. Qi Yunruo held a dagger from who knew where. Voice trembling, he said, Your Highness. The youth was soaked in blood. Face dirted by red. Li Chen pulled him into his chest in an embrace. Qi Yunruo gripped at his collar, eyes wide. Reflecting on his face was a glow of a fire not too far away. At this moment, Nu Baiha and his nine western owl yakshas were all dead. Li Chen had about two thousand men remaining in his army of five thousand. The thousand in the Qiang army, which had lost their leader, had already lost all morale. As they started to retreat, Li Chen scanned all around. Wiped off the blood on Qi Yunruo's face with his sleeve. He calmly commanded his men not to chase after them. Then an unforeseen event occurred, a soldier ran to Li Chen and reported, Your Highness. The Qiang people's second prince, Bo Tu Ke, ordered that whoever retreats will die. He has brought his remaining men to storm us, as revenge for Nu Bai Ha and the Western Owl Yakshas. Li Chen immediately said, Have our men scatter. At this moment, Sita's delay should almost be over. Retreat back to Yusha Pass. Yes. Li Chen looked at Qi Yunruo. Qi Yunruo said, Your Highness, do not worry. I'm not injured. Li Chen beckoned for Hong Sun, and lifted Qi Yunruo onto the horse. He yelled, Retreat. They only had 5,000 people. They had also slayed 5,000 Qiang soldiers. What was most important was that they had eliminated all of the Yakshas and Nu Bai Ha. This was already considered a great victory. To stay and continue to battle made no sense. Li Chen had ordered his men to scatter and retreat. In this situation, this was the best method of retreating. When the enemy was strong and their own men were weak, gathering together would make them a big target. The soldiers of the great state of Kong left in groups of hundreds. Li Chen's group had the fewest people as they were less than twenty. As dawn just broke through the skies, they stopped to take a break. Qi Yunruo sat by Li Chen's side. The violence of the battlefield was already far away. However, that scene from last night was still fresh in his thoughts. They did not have the time to clean up the battlefield. That person named Chi Rui could only be buried in an unmarked mass grave. Chi Yunruo recalled that when he had searched for Li Chen, he luckily did not come across any Qiang soldiers. He had walked past all the bodies on the ground toward Li Chen's direction. Then, someone laying next to his feet grabbed his ankle, his grip crushing. Almost to the point of shattering bone. Meanwhile, Li Chen had locked onto a different heavily injured Qiang soldier. Expressionlessly, 
he bent down and picked up a weapon then he stabbed the Qiang soldier with one quick, heavy thrust. Such an action stained his clothes red. Still a distance away from his goal, Qi Yunruo yanked his foot free and continued to sprint. All of a sudden, he caught sight of something that made his heart freeze. A tall, largely built and strong-looking Qiang soldier threw one of Li Chen's dead subordinates to the side and then rushed toward Li Chen from behind. Without thinking, Qi Yunruo charged at him. The moment that Qiang soldier lifted his weapon, Qi Yunruo summoned all his strength to stab him. They were already a great ways away from the Yun River. Right now, they were uncertain of their location. Chu Qing, who had constantly been by Li Chen's side, said, Your Highness, the people we have sent to find General Zhao probably can't locate us right now. Hopefully we can quickly regroup with Sita's main army and exterminate Bo Tu K's men. They traveled east to return to Yusha Pass. During the night, they deviated from their path. Now, they were in an area that could not be found on their map. Perhaps if they continued east, they would find Yusha Pass. Or maybe, they had to head in a different direction. Their group didn't have much rations. Li Chen gave a dry biscuit to Qi Yunruo. Famished, Qi Yunruo accepted it and bit down hard on it. So many things had happened yesterday that he didn't have any energy left. From not too far away, Qi Yunying watched him. Then he approached him with a water canteen. Only then did Li Chen have time to tend to his own wounds. He applied medicinal ointment to himself and tore a piece of his clothes to use as a makeshift bandage, wrapping it simply. Qi Yunruo found his temperature was high. And worry peppered his gaze as he looked at Li Chen. Li Chen waved it dismissively. He appeared to be exhausted and falling asleep. Qi Yunruo hugged him by his side and did not speak further. Presently, they shouldn't be too far from Yushu Pass. However, they had never expected Bo Tu K's determination. He sent a few groups of soldiers to pursue them. The only way he could grasp victory now was if they could obtain Li Chen's head. New Baiha and the Western Owl Yakshas had already perished on the battlefield. He had lost half of his support. His royal father definitely would think him useless. When Qi Yunruo had heard the sound of hoof steps, Li Chen had yet to wake. Chu Qing and the others had hidden their presence. Their hearts pounded. Chu Qing muttered, at most, there's more than a hundred people. Qi Yunruo touched Li Chen's forehead as he looked at the prince's horse. Hong Sun. It was hidden nearby, concealed by a towering tree. For a long time, he had not known what he was living for. Qi Yunruo shifted his gaze back to Li Chen. He thought about the past. After he had left that house on King Z Lane, he was kept in a small courtyard with no one caring about him and with having anyone he cared for. Including the time he had arrived at Prince Chun's estate, his heart had been filled with unease feeling at a loss. As if noticing his emotions, Li Chen opened his eyes. Qi Yunruo softly said, Your Highness, in my whole life, your honored self has treated me the best. You have given me things, brought me to the pass, and protected me but I have never done anything for you. Li Chen gripped his sleeve. Sorrow filled his gaze as he continued. Long ago, I had always thought that even if Count Ziang treated my mother poorly, my mother continued to love him unconditionally. He had also loved my mother in the past. I am the product of their love. Yet right before my mother passed away, she had called out, Chi Suxiao, you cheated me. Chi Suxiao, in the end, she gazed at the net curtains hanging above her bed and said one phrase. Your Majesty. I had only felt panic then. I realized that for so many years I had never once understood her. I also did not know what I was to her. Your Highness, your honored self must survive. It doesn't matter if I live. But my death can be exchanged for your life. Qi Yunruo stood. He glanced at Qi Yunying, who approached him. For a moment, silence stretched between them. Then he said, Thank you, second brother. As Qi Yunying supported Li Chen, Li Chen could only hold on to a corner of Qi Yunruo's robes in vain. 
He mounted Hong Sun then shifted his gaze to a different direction and set off. He still wore Li Chen's clothes from yesterday. Qi Yun Ruo placed a piece of luggage underneath him as a booster seat, and from the back, one could mistake him for Li Chen. End chapter